continue, and where I left off, I talked about the Jeffersonian ideal. So Jeffersonian democracy isn't strictly tied up with Thomas Jefferson, the uh, relatively elite uh, white slave owner, intellectual, uh, partially man of the people, but it represents uh, the other thinkers it contributed to, such as Madison, and in my view, Tom Paine. Uh, but it coalesces around the idea of some ideas that we can relate to today. So one idea is to be very suspicious of standing armies and militarism. Uh, Jefferson tried to bring us down to uh, like 3,000 people in the army total for the entire continental United States, something like that. He tried to bring down the Navy. Then there was a conflict that kicked off with the Barbary Coast. Uh, and then there was the War of 1812. Uh, but basically they distrusted uh, militarism and generals and martinets who can get into mischief uh, and try to overtly influence things. And now what we have is an economy where we have a completely unnecessary industry. The war industry is basically unnecessary. So, for example, describing Russia as a threat. Russia has a 45 billion a year uh, GDP, uh, 45 billion a year expenditure on defense, whereas we here have a, uh, I would count it, an over 800 billion, uh, but it's in that neighborhood. So they have 5% of just our military. Then you add Germany, France, England. So it's, it's perverse. All this money could be spent better on... Uh, more advanced futuristic ideas or traditional ideas, whether uh, uh, agriculture or construction or teaching or what have you, uh, uh, exploration of science and in space. Uh, there's a lot we could be doing. Uh, so, for example, recently this gravitational wave system they're planning to deploy in space is the most ambitious and largest scale system of its kind. Uh, find these almost undetectable waves. These are the kind of things we could be doing instead of spending this money to literally create things that destroy and pollute. Uh, so <clears throat> the, um, the point is that the Jeffersonian has a distrust of extra overt militarism, and then they have a distrust of concentration of wealth. Uh, the concentration of wealth, as we call Wall Street today, was precisely the concern of Jeffersonians. Uh, and then uh, we move on to the idea, that, and here's the critical part. Uh, this is the idea of the self-sufficient household. So, in a uh, in a in a top-down system, we would be able to have free education and free health care from the federal government. And in a bottom-up system, we would be able to self-organize to solve these problems and not necessarily need to involve the federal or state governments. Uh, it could be done at the county or the municipal level, or it could even be done privately, and this is the key rub here. So, uh, why does Alex Jones hate Bernie Sanders? Just, Alex Jones is so insignificant compared to these philosophical questions, we'll put him at the end. But it comes down to this un unity we had between left-wing oriented people looking for change and against uh, militarism and surveillance and right-wing oriented people that were against uh, these various uh, causes uh, wishing uh, liberty. It was a unifying message as Ron Paul said and a lot of Ron Paul people have gone and it's a real disservice to the uh, liberty movement uh, for Alex Jones to be calling Bernie all these names. So uh, I think I've dispensed with most of these uh, problems um, that uh, that Jones talks about, and but we get to this central issue, which is what is what is what is our vision really going to look like in the future? And so I'm suggesting that if you develop, for example, a K, a kinder, a pre kindergarten all the way to postgraduate uh, research university as an anchor foundation for every community, uh, that uh, that people had. Uh, 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 could, could be part of a co-op, so they could work part-time to get extract from that system the things that they need. And they could work full-time as an anchor uh, uh, wage, and, and there are eight of these core utility industries. Uh, so one way is we can just self-organize, and there's some baseline, which is you say you have to meet some average globally or nationally or whatsoever uh, in order to be able to not use the taxation to deliver these services. 
Uh, so if you self-organize education, you wouldn't need property taxes that are currently going to education uh, because you would have self-organized. So how do we go about being able to allow people to self-organize, but essentially come in just like with the Voters' Rights Act and straighten out areas where this gets abused? Uh, so it sounds like a hot-button issue, but uh, if we can solve that problem, you can have right libertarians, small government libertarians, and left-wing progressives and anarchists that are oriented uh, towards uh, social justice and egalitarian society. Now, the Jeffersonian model was an egalitarian society, so uh, many of the tick boxes for the Jeffersonian uh, would, be an, uh, would be amenable uh, and even uh, greatly uh, synergized with a Bernie Sanders campaign, who is against concentration of wealth, which was a fundamental aspect of Jeffersonian democracy, and uh, who is for a prosperous and uh, educated middle class. And Jefferson did advocate for universal education. Um, so then, and then on the issue of militarism, uh, St uh, Sanders clearly isn't interested in spending all our money on a military buildup. That we're essentially driving global insecurity through our own military expenditures in a keep-up race. Uh, it's very dangerous right now. What's going on? Uh, Saudi Arabia has sent their forces to Turkey. When you combine those two countries' militaries, they're at 80 billion GDP. But qualitatively, the Saudi Army, armed Forces is not given even in the top 20 in anything I've seen. So even though they're the th third largest uh, military by expenditure after China and the U.S., and in some cases even the second, they aren't even considered in the top 20 militaries. But uh, this fueling of arms into the Middle East, there have been articles written about it lately, it's extremely irresponsible. Uh, so he fits that tick box, we hope. Uh, uh, he has made some welcome statements about Kissinger, about Libya, uh, about uh, not using force, uh, uh, about creating coalitions, uh, that, uh, uh, that overall uh, people have felt reassured that, especially with his long track record, that has uh, not shown a tendency to cave, uh, although, you know, not perfect. He is somebody who's been in politics for a long time. Uh, so uh, it does a real disservice that Alex would say all this. So we'll get to him now. So Alex Jones um, doesn't recognize the fraternal revolutionary spirit that's available to unite the right and left because he sells fear and paranoia partly. He doesn't have an articulate vision other than uh, rugged individualism and self-reliance, uh, as far as I can tell. Um, but I could be mistaken. I mean, maybe he's a, you know, he's an Austrian economics fan, but you can't let specific approaches to solving a problem uh, belie the fact that you have to respect people who have deep philosophical grounding in their beliefs and are focused on the right problems and, uh, and creating a relatively fair uh, society uh, is uh, in all of our interests based on all international studies uh, that a society uh, that is uh, has real democratic access, uh, and and that's my big hope for the the Sanders campaign is that we keep this going. We uh, in, sort of get used to be running over different elections to different candidates as a sort of online uh, uh, libertarian uh, uh, but idealist uh, populist uh, internet age crowd. Um, and that we keep organized uh, and adapt the, uh, from campaign to campaign. Uh, uh, but right now the integration should be through the Bernie Sanders system. And if he gets elected, hopefully we'll keep this whole apparatus up and running and keep running meetings and, and find a way to contribute to policy and run for office locally. Uh, thank you very much for listening. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck. And a final note on Alex Jones. Uh, I think Alex is just, uh, if I may say so, jealous that the big revolution is coming and he can't really find a way to relate to it. Um, maybe jealous is the wrong word, but I wish he would join this revolution and advocate uh, his own views on matters, which is self-organization, self-organization to solve social problems. Um, if you can actually do it, 
uh, you, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to unplug from the system. And that's the question is how do we go about doing that? I make that a plank, an anarchist plank in a socialist platform or a libertarian plank in a New Deal platform. Okay, thank you. Good night and good luck.